Before we start the video, a large thank you to Francis, Kajit, Nick, Leon, Shanta, Fat Kung Fu, Aaron, Tyler, Kalavicus, Mortis, and Bob for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, and today we're going to start our friendly AI, or friendly phantom logic. So, I'm just going to duplicate this gentleman over here and bring him over here and rename him. Um, so I'm going to go over, as I'm doing this, what we're going to do in the next couple of videos. Uh, the goal is to make it so we can make a summoning sign appear. And when you hit that summoning sign, you will spawn in an AI version of a friendly phantom. This is something you typically see before boss doors. So we're going to make the same logic here across a few videos. So I am going to duplicate this gentleman. I forgot to do that right away. And I'm going to rename one of these to friendly phantom. And I'm going to just hide the other one over here for now. Um, so let's just go over here and just rename this to friendly phantom. Now our AI scripts are unfortunately called enemy animator manager, enemy manager, etc., etc. Now that's not going to fly anymore because we're going to make these scripts basically neutral across all AI logic, meaning the AI could be neutral, it could be friendly, it could be, uh, it could be a negative AI or enemy AI rather. So we're going to make this uh, more clear and more fitting with the project. You don't have to do this. I'm going to do this because I'm a stickler over naming conventions. So uh, basically in the AI scripts folder, everything that says enemy, I'm just simply going to rename to AI character instead of enemy. And whatever the previous name syntax was after that, we'll keep that the same. I'm going to fast forward through all of this as I do it so you don't have to watch me. But I will talk over this as I am doing it. And we'll go over what we're going to do. So uh, renaming everything that says enemy uh, to AI character. And then the goal after this is to set up a set of states for the phantoms, friendly phantoms rather. I'm going to call them companion states. And they're going to act uh, or they're going to be created purely uh, with the purpose of being summoned to follow a host or companion, that being the player. They're going to act similar to our other AI scripts, meaning we're going to have a combat stance state, uh, an idle state, a pursue target state, but we're going to have some extra parameters that will be specific only to friendly phantoms. Um, you could also set this up when we're done uh, to use these friendly phantoms in reverse and give the enemy uh, friendly companions that will follow them around. So you get enemies moving around in groups and stuff. Uh, and if you're like me and your Visual Studio for some reason wasn't hooked up to your Unity, you may have to replace all of the scripts in your prefab on your enemy uh, AI, which I'm going to do right now. You might not have to do that. I didn't have to do it in another version of Unity. Um, for whatever reason, my Visual Studios became unlinked and now I had to. Don't forget to drag back in your variables like your lock on transform, etc, etc. And I'm just going to rename this last script here and clear this out. I'm going to check for any errors. And I think we're good. I've dragged in my um, my rigid body and my lock on transform, all of my animator variables, etc., etc. Okay, so uh, now we have a player and we have our friendly phantom. I'm going to set the layers here too on my uh, combat manager. And I'm just going to go down here now, make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, drag in the post and the backstab receiver transforms. That's important. Um, a lot of this stuff is auto called on awake and we need to hide it. And the inspector, we're going to do a cleanup video real soon because we need to do another one. We have a lot of um, clutter specifically in the enemy manager script. So we're going to do a whole episode very soon where we tidy all that up too because we've done a lot of changes since the first iteration of the AI. So we could use some tidying up. All right, uh, I'm just going to check here. That looks good. Uh, going to drag in the collider and the character collision blocker on the AI locomotion manager. That's good. Now let's create our first script. So I am going to call this script uh, follow companion um, state. So I might change that humanoid. Well, we don't really need to keep it humanoid, to be honest with you, because um, this is going to be for summoning phantoms only. So that will be uh, a given. You can make a simplified version of this for spirit summons, but I'm going to cover that in another video. So I'm going to make a folder for this called friendly phantoms friendly phantom states there we go let's drag this new script in there and let's open this up now we have to make a few more scripts we might as well set up the entire framework for it before we start plugging in logic so i'm gonna open this up put in my namespace sg and i am going to make this derive from state and then i'm going to call in the override method and then we can make our other scripts all right, cool. That looks good. You can delete this and just return new if you want for now. Don't need anything here just yet. So we have our follow companion state humanoid script. And actually, I'm going to rename that now. I thought of a better naming convention. We're going to call this 
uh, companion state follow player or better yet follow host there we go okay now we have a follow host script we also need a an idle script and we need a few more let's just say companion state idle good minimize visual studios open this up let's erase the start and update functionality make this derive from state uh, call in our override. Make sure you don't forget your namespace like me or else you won't be able to make it derive from state. Okay, looks good. Override. Tick, there we go. All right, now let's make our companion state pursue target. Let's open that up. Let's do the same thing. Erase the start and update. Throw it in our namespace and make it derive from state and call in our override. Okay, state. Excellent override. Okay, so we still need attack now and combat stand state. I believe that is all we have remaining. Um, they're going to behave, as I said before, very similar to the regular AI logic. The differences will be if the companion gets too far away from your player or the host rather, we're gonna make them basically go back within a certain range to the host of the game. You can not do this if you'd rather, and you can make them return to the host uh, after combat is ended or they've killed the target that they're on or, or whatever. There's a million different ways to do this, but I believe Souls handles it in a manner that if you get too far away from your, from your summon, uh, they will try to close the distance, uh, even to a point where they will ignore combat to a certain extent. So I'm gonna put my namespace here now. This is the last one. I've just made the companion stance combat or companion state combat stance script and the attack target script. So let's call in our overrides and everything. And on all these scripts, just so we're not getting an error, I'm just gonna type in return this. I'm gonna copy that now and go through every one and just paste that in here. Make sure they all derive from state. I forgot to do it here on my attack target state. Override, there we go. And paste this in here. And get rid of this, paste this in here, and get rid of this, and paste this in here. And this is already good. Okay. All right, now let's start laying down some logic. So we could start with the follow host. Now, what do we need when you think about this? Well, we need to know right away uh, what is the maximum distance we can be away from the player or host. Uh, and to get the maximum distance, obviously, we're going to need to know the distance we are currently from the host. So you can say distance from host. And we want a minimum distance when we're around the host so we don't get too close to them as well. But what we can do is actually go to the, I'm going to go to the state here first and rename this to AI character. So every time I make a new state, its default variable name is not enemy. And then I'm going to copy this and change everything that says enemy to AI character because the word enemy is very misleading in this context. Okay, looks good. Now, I'm actually going to put these variables uh, on the AI character manager, formerly known as the enemy manager, just in case you are confused. Um, these two variables here specifically, because like I said, if you want to set it up so you give your enemies the capability to have um, friendly companions as well, then this logic will work not just on summons, rather, but on uh, groupings of enemies. You could have it so certain enemies will stick close to other enemies, treating them as their companion. So down here, I'm gonna make another header below AI archery settings. And again, we are going to clean up this script very soon and give better positions to these variables and a better setup so it's not so cluttered. Uh, but I'm gonna put these new settings here and I am going to make a, another variable of type character manager and I'm going to call this companion. And this will be the character that this AI is bound to. So we will save this. And max distance is very uh, not descriptive here. So we're going to rename that as well because this is um, a much broader script. But then here in update, we're going to say uh, if companion does not equal null, then our distance from companion will be much like the logic above us. It'll just be vector three distance, but instead of current target dot transform dot position, it will be companion dot transform dot position. So we can kind of use some of this logic. It's the same idea. We want to just measure distance continually between this AI and its companion. 
All right, now back over on this script again. Let's rename max distance because that is very, very ambiguous. We need to make it a bit more detailed. We'll say max distance from companion. And then we can make a variable too if you want to for minimum distance from companion. And what will happen here is if we get within this distance or less than this distance to our companion, we'll just make them kind of get away from the player so they're not always blocking you uh, or whatever. Okay, so now let's go over here on the companion state follow host. And we're going to say if AI character dot distance from companion is greater than AI character dot max distance from companion. Uh, then what we want to do is basically make our AI run towards our companion. So we can actually go to the pursue target state humanoid script here and take some of this logic and modify it because it is very similar. What do we need right away? Well, the handle rotate towards target script, or I mean functionality rather. Uh, this is basically identical. We're going to erase some of it, but we're going to use uh, half of it. So let's go over here and paste this function just below public override state tick. We don't need to rotate manually in this situation. Going to rename enemy manager to AI character. Uh, we're only rotating where the nav mesh agent tells us to get to. So we only need this bottom part. So copy the bottom part within the else statement, delete the rest, and paste it. Now replace current targets with companion.transform.position. And now what you want to do is call this function uh, somewhere in the state tick because basically this will just have a path to our target after we set the movement vertical amount on the animator to 1. The same as you would get to a target from pursue target state. So let's also copy the process sword and shield combat style. We don't need to make a style selection here because getting back to your companion is true regardless of your combat style. Uh, we can paste this logic and modify some things. So first off, we're going to rename enemy to AI character. Um, also, we're going to put these checks at the top of the state. So we're going to check if we're performing interaction. Um, and we're going to put that above the distance from companion check just so we don't perform that if we're already in an interaction or um, if we're performing action rather and we're going to take that again actually and we're going to put that uh, above the rotate towards target logic so we're not rotating if we're in some kind of action like we're taking damage or whatever and now we're going to change this enemy to AI character. So we're going to say if the AI character dot distance from companion is greater than the max distance, then we're going to set our vertical to one. Otherwise, if we're less than uh, or equal to the minimum or uh, yeah, it will be minimum distance, then we're going to return uh, the idle state. But now we're going to make a new variable here now because the minimum distance isn't really a good thing to have here. We're going to make something called a return distance. And basically, I don't want the AI coming up and touching the player every time they get with out of out of uh, range of the player. So here's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to make the companion state idle variable and call that on awake here. Idle state equals get component companion state idle. But we're also going to make a variable. So every time they get out of the range, the max range, they come back within X units of the player. So um, if that doesn't make sense, it will very soon. I will show you. I'll even make a, a few comments here to clarify just so we know exactly what's going on. And this is confusing. So the first comment, max distance. The max distance is the max distance we are allowed to go from our companion. The minimum distance, which we have not set up yet, is the minimum distance we can be from our companion. If we're any closer than this, then we're going to run some logic to back up. Um, the distance is our current distance, obviously. But now a third variable will be... I'm going to call this return distance and uh, we're going to call this return distance from companion. I'm going to initialize it as say two and this is going to be the distance uh, in closeness we get to our companion when we're at a bounds. So if we get at a bounds, we're going to come two units away from our companion before we resume other logic. So before the pursuit or um, before the return to companion logic ends, we're going to get back within two units of them. So let's just say if AI character dot distance from companion is less than or equal to AI character dot return distance from companion, uh, then we return the idle state. So that's pretty simple. We can paste this here. And then what we can do is actually, or copy this sorry here and go to the idle state. And the first thing we wanna do in the idle state is just set our vertical to zero over a time of 0.1f over time dot delta time. And this is the state we're going to use to scan for a target if we're with our, our character friends. So on the idle state humanoid, you can copy the target selection logic here, all of it, 
and just paste it in there. So let's go over here and companion state idle and paste it right below here. Now we're going to need to make the or paste in the detection layer and the layers that block line of sight also. Uh, these can be found also on the idle state humanoid. Paste them up top. And we need to plug in the variable uh, for pursue target state. So what are we going to do in the pursue target state? Well, let's not worry about that right in this moment. Let's just call the variable here so we get rid of the error. Because as you know, there's no logic on the companion state pursue target yet. We can call that on awake. If you want to, you can call that um, or serialize it up here too and drag in the inspector. Again, I'm showing you the, the function. Uh, how you go about it is entirely up to you. I do encourage you to definitely make it as neat as possible. Uh, for demonstration purposes, obviously, I'm not that worried about it right now. Okay, so dragging in the player in the companion variable of our friendly AI. Uh, now let's go to the enemy states, which is uh, renamed now to character states. Uh, eradicate every single state here, and you want to replace all these states with the companion states. And remember, in order for this to work, you have to drag in the player under the companion variable on this AI. Uh, in a future video very soon, we're going to make it so when you touch a summoning sign on the ground, then we assign the player to that variable using that sign. But for now, just for testing, so we can make sure this works, so let's set this up manually. So let's set the detection layer to character and the layers that block line of sight to default. Default is our environment. Um, and let's go up here now to the idle state. I'm just going to read this over, make sure this is fine. This looks good. But what we want to do is also make a variable for our um, follow our companion state. And what we want to do is call this an awake or uh, drag in the inspector. And if we get too far away from our companion when we're in this state, we want to follow them. Now, uh, when our companion is not in combat, they're going to have different max and min ranges. Because if you're in combat, maybe, or if you're not in combat, your max range is probably like four, five. If you're in combat, it's probably about 10. So we're going to do that in the next video, but for now, let's just say if AI character dot distance from companion is greater than AI character dot max distance from companion, then return follow host state. Uh, it'll be very easy to detect if we're in combat or not, by the way, so don't worry about that. I will show you how to do that as well. But now if we go into the uh, inspector here now, and we go down, let's set the maximum distance from the companion to something like, uh, we can say, we'll set the minimum to one, that doesn't work yet, that we'll set the max to five. Actually, let's set the minimum to two, uh, so max is five, min's two, and return distance is two. That means if I run more than five spaces away, uh, the AI should run within two squares of me. So if I start the game now, and I let this guy run to me, yes, he does. And if I run away, he will follow me. Okay, cool. And he stops within two units of me. So this is working as intended so far. In the next video, we're going to make it so we will give this uh, little guy the ability to attack characters with us. And we're going to edit his ranges so that when he's in combat, he doesn't always constantly need to run up to us if we're just more than uh, five units away. So we'll have the distances change depending on the state that he's in. Meaning if he's fighting something, we'll give him a little more leniency on his range. So as usual, if you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment. It genuinely helps out this series so, so much. And as usual, a special thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you all so much. Uh, when we get back in the next video, we're going to continue the friendly phantom logic.